Huda means freedom. Uh, we greet each other with that term uh, uh, because it means freedom and because we believe that freedom is something that should be on the minds of black people 24 hours a day. I want to first of all really express my appreciation to the Green Party. Uh, in Missouri, uh, you have been firm in terms of solidarity with us after this assault by the United States government on us. You can say Biden, you can say Republicans, the United States government made that attack on us. This was not some alien force that did it. And I want to express appreciation to, uh, to comment Dr. Uh, Geo Steiner. I, think, I really want to appreciate the courage that you have exemplified, not just this time, but historically, yeah. since I have come to know you. I really want to appreciate it. I want to uh, also comment Zaki, President General uh, Zaki Baruti, who is a formidable force. You heard what Don Fitz has had to say about him uh, in terms of his participation, his struggle, his participation in this movement forever. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge that uh, UAPO, or the Universal African People's Organization, the work that you do. And of course, there's the Uhuru movement that's in the, off, in the, in the building as well. And uh, including uh, Comrade uh, Jesse Neville, who is here, who uh, uh, is the chair of the Hood of Solidarity Movement, and Comrade Penny Hess, who is the chair of the African People's Solidarity Movement, who, along with me, uh, constitute what we characterize as the Uhuru Three. Uh, and those of us who were attacked at 5 o'clock in the morning, pre dawn, here uh, in St. Louis. Uh, by uh, assault weapon toting uh, military forces that were wearing camouflage outfits uh, and in, uh, coming in armored personnel carriers, personnel carriers uh, to our homes. I live in one of the most uh, economically depressed sectors of, uh, of this city. And uh, the government came, uh, attacked our house, uh, uh, and threatened the entire community, set, shut down the entire neighborhood. Uh, occupied the porch next to us, put uh, tape on, the, on their uh, doorbell uh, video so that nobody could see what it was that they were doing. And then using flashbang grenades uh, and battering rams, knocked the doors and windows of our, of our, of our home uh, and even uh, tossed the, the flashbang grenades uh, into the stairwell in the back of my house. This is what they did uh, at my home. Uh, terrorizing me, terrorizing my wife, uh, who I thought they were—I thought they were going to kill me because they killed Fred Hampton uh, 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 in December on December fourth, nineteen sixty-nine, in a similar kind of raid. They murdered him. Uh, FBI cooperating with the local Chicago Police Department. They murdered Fred Hampton, and when they ordered me and us out of that house, I asked my wife to stay upstairs while I went downstairs so that, uh, and she should call and let people know when we were under attack because they were yelling, this is the FBI, come out with your hands up. Uh, and we come out, and of course she couldn't call anybody because they had jammed the phones. So we couldn't communicate with anybody. Uh, they handcuffed me behind my back. My wife, when she comes down, she opens the door, she's almost hit in the face by a drone that they sent up into the stairwell of my house. Uh, they put, uh, they, they handcuffed her and then offered us an opportunity to sit on the curb. It was a real violent uh, kind of assault. And at the same time, in, uh, right across town, uh, uh, in South uh, St. Louis, they attacked uh, our office, uh, the Solidarity Center on Gravor, and, and uh, they used battering rams, they used uh, the same kinds of uh, uh, grenades, uh, flashbang grenades. They went up to the apartment upstairs, they handcuffed Jesse, the handcuffed uh, uh, Amanda, Amanda uh, his partner, uh, et cetera. They occupied our spaces for like eight or nine hours. They stole all kinds of materials. They stole laptops, they stole uh, uh, cell phones, anything uh, kind of devices, communication devices, they took it all. And so in St. Petersburg, Florida at the same time, uh, they attacked our office uh, 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 my home in St. Petersburg, Florida, that's, that's not occupied. They used battering rams, locked down the doors, used the same process, and then the Uhuru House in St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, they went there, knocked doors down, uh, they took our radio uh, station off the air temporarily, they raided our archives, uh, they stole financial files, 
the whole bit. And then they tell us that they're doing this because later in the day, there's a Russian who is going to be indicted uh, and that my name uh, came up in the indictment and that's the basis for what they were doing. Uh, they, and so therefore they had a, a search warrant, they said, that we didn't see uh, until after they had left, hours later when we go back to the house, they had left, uh, they had a search warrant. So I wanted to mention this uh, in terms of what happened and it was the Biden administration that did it. But I don't make a fundamental distinction between the Biden administration, uh, the Trumpers, uh, and, and the Democrats and the Republicans. Uh, because uh, this event that happened, and what we see occurring in the world today, is so similar to the high tide of revolutionary struggle that was happening in the world. And in this country in the 1960s, it bears so, many so much resemblance. The students in motion on campuses everywhere. The whole thing is unraveling uh, right under their feet as a crisis that this, this system is <laughs> undergoing. But from our perspective, and I just wanted to say this, from our perspective, uh, it is a, a crisis of a system uh, that is founded on colonialism, yeah. on the attack of Africa, yeah. the attack of the indigenous people here. You talk about Palestine, America is a settler colony. Yeah. It is the yeah. primary leading settler colony in the world. Yeah. This occupied territory that we live on. I believe in this, the whole slogan uh, from, from the river to the sea uh, that Palestine must be free, but also from sea to shining sea, the indigenous people on this land must be free. Because uh, uh, we're living, we're living uh, in a situation of colonial domination. And when you look at, the, and we're talking about a social system that did not exist the world economy that we suffer from and experience today is something that was created uh, 600 years ago when Portugal attacked Africa and initiated the process of stealing black people, transferring us all around the world. That's how it ended up right here in St. Louis. It's something difficult for many people who call themselves leftists to handle, but it is the truth. And one reason it's difficult to, for, for them to handle is because we say we can't get on a ship in, in, in 1619 as Africans in Africa and then get off uh, in, this, in New Jersey as a Negro. If we were Africans when we got on the ship, we were Africans when we got off the ship. I think it's fundamentally important. This is how we understand this reality. This is, this is what we think is extremely important in terms of inform our struggle uh, because we're not just fighting uh, to, to make a better place under slavery. We're not fighting for a benign colonialism. Colonialism has to go. And this is the foundation upon which the entire thing rests. I wanted to say that. And uh, I also think it's really important uh, that, to, to see the courage of, uh, of this, this movement of uh, Jill Stein. Yes. Uh, uh, I saw the picture of her uh, in Moscow. I went to Moscow. I went to Moscow twice. I liked <laughs> uh, 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 I, you know, I've heard so much garbage about Russia and Russians and what have you. I thought I was going to step into the Stone Ages or something to that effect, right? Modern, clean, and know what? I've been all over the world. I, I spent years in Berlin and Germany. I spent, I've been to France on so many different times. Paris, they like to brag about this, this wonderful Paris. Black people, James Baldwin, Richard Wright, everybody goes to Paris. Paris is like Mississippi in the 1950s. Go there and see what happens to young Africans there. But in, but in Moscow, the truth of the matter in Moscow, uh, it was extraordinary. Just the treatment by the people, just ordinary people who didn't know who the hell I was or anything like that. There's a whole different difference. And you know what I'm talking about. You get the vibe in communities. You get the vibe in communities if they don't want you there. I've been on the bus in Germany, and, and I spoke a little German and what have you. I didn't speak a word of Russian, uh, but it was a, a big difference there. And, and I understand why the difference exists. I want to say this and get out of your way. First of all, elections are simply nonviolent contests between contending sectors of the colonial ruling class for control of the colonial state apparatus. Yes. Yes. Don't matter if you're Republican or if you're a Democrat, that's what it's about. And it rests upon this foundation of colonialism. So that's not to say we don't participate in elections. We do and have participated in elections. But the question is to what end? 
Our participation in election does not end with the participation in election. We're going somewhere with this participation. We're raising the contradictions for the people. We are, we are occupying space that belongs to us. And we're not going to allow them to push us out of this democratic space that we fought for, black people died for, et cetera. The US, the US government has said that the Russians paid us to run somebody for office in 2017, 2019. I don't know if Russians have ever had to go through the kind of thing that black people have gone through to vote. Nobody in this country has, has paid the price for voting that black people have paid for voting. And you're going to negate our history by saying something like the Russians are the ones who informed us to do this. They bombed our churches, killed our children, assassinated leaders, and stuff like that. The Russians told us to do this. You, this what an insult they would make to black people. And that's an insult they make based on the assumption that there are people here silly enough to believe it and go along, go along with that. One. So Russians didn't pay us to do that. We did it because we, we, that's our space. That's how we fought for that space. We're going to use all the democratic space that's there so that we can talk to our people for the, for the, for the price we paid for. But even I was one of those who organized 1964, the Civil Rights uh, Bill, 1965, the Voting Rights Act. I was in the community organizing for that. I was the one they tried to kill in Madison, Florida for, for making that happen. They're going to say the Russians? The Russians paid me to do this. Where the hell was Biden? Biden was voting against the, 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 the whole Civil Rights Act, the Civil Rights Bill. Biden was somebody who said that he didn't even believe in busing because he didn't want his children to have to go to school in a jungle. This is Joe Biden. This is the Democrat who loves white people, black people. So I wanted to say that. And there are other things. I mean, uh, Jill was in Moscow. They, and the question was raised. Like there's something suspicious about you. You went to Moscow. Uh, uh, and what a kind of ridiculous backwards uh, uh, statement is that? I went to Moscow. I was in Ireland when the so during the so-called troubles, the solidarity with the Irish people who was fighting against British colonialism. I was I was in Nicaragua right after the revolution, in solidarity with the Nicaraguan. See Nicaragua vencio El Salvador, vencerá. I was there. Uh, I was there uh, uh, in, in Spain in 2007, international conference, uh, working with and winning as many people around the world who would unite with the struggle of black people in this country against colonialism. Didn't take any Russians to do that. Uh, and the fact of the matter is it took the United States government in every instance to block it, to, to, to try and to threaten us, to try and tear us out of political action, political motion. And this assumption that black people here are not supposed to have any friends. We're not supposed to have any friends. So we have to rely on the United States government that's killing us and putting us in this situation as the only friends. No, 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 no. I just want to say, so this is an attack on the right for black people to be self-determining, like Palestine uh, and the people in, in Gaza who are setting up a capacity, fighting for the capacity to feed, clothe, and house themselves without some colonial overlord are trying to set the terms for how they should live. In this community alone, right here in St. Louis, we've transformed an entire sector of the African population. We've done that. We've created something like, I don't know, we've created something like eight blocks, continuous blocks of, of land redevelopment, creating housing, creating uh, institutions for the black community here, et cetera. This, this, this is work that negates colonialism. And this is what they can't tolerate for black people to say there's an alternative to Joe Biden, there's an alternative to Donald Trump, there's an alternative to the Democrat and the Republican Party. That's what Joe Sign is saying. Yeah. There's an alternative. Woo! Uh, and we believe firmly in self-determination. We are preparing to govern. I want to be clear on that point. We are preparing to govern, not just trying to find a good place on the damn plantation. <laughs> Ultimately, the plantation's got to go. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. And Aaron Bushnell, we love Aaron Bushnell. And, but Aaron Bushnell was an example of, of an assault on free speech. Aaron Bushnell did what he did 
They, they wouldn't have been writing about the Palestinian question if Aaron Bushnell hadn't done what he did. He couldn't. New York Times was not going to report on it. Washington Post was not going to do it. Zuckerberg was going to keep you uh, locked up in Facebook jail. So this was a desperate act just to get heard, just to be able to say something to the world. Aaron Bushnell, he was our guy. And I want to say that. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, again, I want to just really appreciate uh, this concept of a dysfunctional government really is just a statement that the sectors, the bourgeoisie sectors of the ruling class at war, at war with each other uh, to such a point that the crisis makes itself manifest in, this, in the institutions they've created like the government itself. But guess what? Uh, they are moving the way they're moving uh, because it's a fragile situation. If they have to send armored vehicles to to a poor section in St. Louis, the black community, armored vehicles, just like they're sending warships in the, uh, uh, in the Red, Red Sea to deal with the Palestinians, that's fragility on their part. And the fact is that the peoples of the world are winning. And that was our objective to keep struggling, to keep fighting, to keep winning, and also to raise the struggle against colonialism. Because if you raise the colonial question, you raise the essential question that holds the entire process up. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.